So, um, Gabriel, thank you for the question about my background, actually. I don't want to spend lots of time on that, but there's some funny stories, interesting stories associated with it. So here's, your, here's the question from uh, Gabriel. Could you tell us more about your development as a painter, how you found out about Gamel? Was he, was he your first teacher? And then I think, he said, I think he said it was Richard Locke who ran into one of Gamel's students while copying at the museum. Did you have a similar experience? Um, yeah, that, that's an interesting question. Um, there are a couple different directions you can go with that. If you're actually asking that long question about my development, this probably isn't the time for that. Uh, but I'll tell you about the background of these people. My, you know, a painter's development, it's in his own hands. Uh, I've learned. Uh, you can, um, you can, um, uh, uh, what's, what's the right word? Rue the day that you, uh, that you couldn't find a really good teacher and all those things, but in the end of the day, you're a self-instructor anyway, uh, and also you're, it's in your hands to stay true to the course, to, to find out the, the nature of the thing and, and keep on track. Even though you don't know what it is, you can tell when that's not it. And a lot of people don't know how to play that, so to speak, that game. And I was fortunate enough to have been uh, uh, somehow or other uh, of that ilk intrinsically, just like I had a sense of what I wanted. And it was, obviously it was out of what drew me from you know, frankly, looking at the paintings in Encyclopedia Britannica from a 1930 like, edition, maybe it's 1929 edition, uh, that we had in our house for, for educational purposes. Uh, and virtually, I mean, I saw a few other books. I don't think I even saw a museum before I was 15 years old. So there are a lot of things that you can actually attribute um, um, uh, your lack of knowledge to, but over time, you know, I'm, you, you catch up pretty fast. And of course, when I was in the school in New York, I actually was at the Metropolitan Museum at least twice a week, uh, just walked up from, from the Art Students League, and if not more, uh, probably more even. So, um, so you saturate yourself at that point with the real thing, which is, you know, frankly, almost overwhelming. Uh, and then I was fortunate enough when Boston, once I got to Gamble, to live 10 minutes from that museum and the Gardner Museum and and uh, the murals at the library in, in, in Boston were 20 minutes away, and I was a walk, I think I could walk in less than an hour to the Fog Art Museum. And a uh, walk I did, of course, in my state of uh, uh, <laughs> impecuniarity, <laughs> impecuniarity, is that the right word? Um, Impecuniousness. So, um, let me give you the background, though. I was uh, at the Art Students League, and I think I tell this story probably in, uh, one of those videos on there a little bit, but I'm gonna, it's gonna be in the book, it's gonna be featured in the book. This story is simply the way it really happened. And it was that I was at the Art Students League and um, I, we were in drawing classes with Robert Beverly Hale. The construction drawing was all anybody taught. Now you just hack, 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 hack. Nobody would suggest to you that there's any end except just hack and they'd give you 10 minute poses. If you're very, very lucky, you might get an hour long pose. You wouldn't get anything like two weeks of study. Never mind what some people do in some of the atelier systems, uh, what I don't, which I don't actually subscribe to, and that is six months or something on a single cast. But um, uh, so I'm saying, I sat there in the, at the school. I was, you know, you'd work with no matter who you worked with, the level of instruction wasn't very profound. It wasn't deep. It wasn't an atelier system where somebody was taking responsibility to get you somewhere. At one point, I took the time to ask one of the painters, two or three of us who were really serious guys, went and sat a guy down, took him to lunch, and said, will you take us seriously? You know, I didn't even know about the atelier type system. And I said, look, we, we want to be good painters. If we get a, get a studio somewhere, can, we, can you come and critique us you know, on a regular basis? And he just said, no, I wouldn't do that. I'm getting what I want out of the art students league. You know, you spend an hour or two uh, every several couple days or so, and... Um, get your money, get your, get your connections and leave. And so I worked for him, I guess, worked, worked for this guy. Uh, but so nevertheless, the sense that you're not learning a dang thing and you're making it all up as you went, you know, you know it, was a, it was, was frustrating. I mean, there's a level which was also a mercy because it made you have to start thinking for yourself, which was to me a fantastically good thing. Even though Gamma later on accused me of being far too independent. <laughs> uh, that's another story of its own. But uh, so I'd be frustrated. I'm talking about finally I'd got to this point where I was sitting in the, in the, in the classrooms talking about it. I found, oh, I found this volume of the drawings that used to be the product of the classes. I saw a drawing by McMonies out of a class 
at the Art Students League. And it was like a classic um, 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 academic drawing. And I said, and I didn't, the word academic meant nothing to me, by the way, at the time, I just saw a drawing. And I said, I went to the register uh, with this catalog I found down in this little dank little um, library at the, at the Art Students League. And I, and I knew the answer. And I was, I suppose I was just being a little rude, but I went to the register and I said, where is this being taught in the museum? I mean, in the Art Students League. And she said, oh, that's every, everybody teaches that. That's what we do here. And of course, it was not even a little true. Um, and um, so I would uh, carry on some conversations from time to time with some fellow members at the, in the Brackman class and sometimes in the cafeteria. One guy, finally, he said, um, he said you know, he's a 60-year-old guy who had made a career out of, the, um, out of working for Reader's Digest in their art department, or the head of their art department, actually. And he offered me a book, Twilight of Painting, and he says, you're talking like, and I'm, by the way, in the conversations at the, uh, in, the, in the cafeteria, <laughs> <laughs> I was saying things like, well, "Is this gone? Is it just gone forever? I mean, is painting over, as we know it? You know, and the and the and the opportunity to do this again at this level is it gone because nobody's teaching it? And this art students like, I've been around. By the way, by that time, I'd been around looking all across the country. I'd, I'd been in places, Chicago, other places uh, in L.A., looking, not finding. In New York, not finding. And uh, Boston, but." So this guy offered me a book. He said, when I was a young man, this guy, I had a chance to study with a guy, and I just felt I was too young at the time, and I never, you know, and then I found myself doing whatever I was doing, got into business. And he said, uh, but he said, read the book. It's called The Twilight of Painting, written by R.H. Ives Gamble. That was my introduction to the Gamble thing, and there was this conversation there. It was nothing but pain to me because it was what he said, written in 1947, so that was uh, 30 years before, and he was writing... And he was writing, that's basically kind of all over. And he was writing to these students that may someday exist on the face of the earth that might bring back painting. And so I was, you know, that was not particularly helpful, but at some point in the near future, one of my fellow students at the, uh, in the Brackman class, which was an Impressionist class, had met some of the Gamble students in Provincetown, where they s summered a little bit. And, uh, and he said, I'm going to see these guys who are students of Gamble's, and would you like to go? We're going to Chinatown for dinner. And I don't, I probably was too broke to even think about going, but I wasn't going to not go. So, but, uh, but I, you know, so I was dumbfounded that there was actually guys, there was actually a, a guy teaching, this guy Gamma was teaching, I assumed he'd be long dead. And uh, so I went with him and met these guys, took him back eventually to the Art Students League, showed him what I was doing. And I, this is the way I tell it is, I mean, I can't think of another better way to say it, that within a few seconds of their seeing what I was doing at the Art Students League, they showed me the line of shadow. Nobody at the Art was telling me anything to me that had anything to do with the visual world. And nothing like it. A little bit of it in terms of some things with color was sometimes scientific-ish. But that really was the beginning of my education and that really alarmed me. But that, it was at that point that I, uh, of course, started quizzing them about what it would take to get into Gamel, uh, to study with him and all that sort of stuff. I had no hope. I mean, I just wasn't about to be disappointed. So I, I just went on like that, but it turns out that over time that they actually decided they would like to have me there, and having met me, and that they went out of their way to begin to uh, to to make uh, um, uh, reach to Gamble, reach out to Gamble on my behalf. And the long story, I mean, that's a great story all by itself. But the long story is that eventually Gamble took me on as a student, even though I wasn't his 18-year-old uh, wonderkind. Uh, you know, I was 26 at the time, which he said that isn't young. And he was, not, he was very uninclined in some ways, although one of the other guys was older than me, so I don't, and he hadn't been there more than a couple of years, so I think Gamble was rather, because of his lack of outreach, you know, rather needing to take what he could get. So anyway, but that was how I got to Gamble. That was that, was that story. I don't think that's all you were asking. Um, but that is it, yeah, yeah, that is what you were asking. But uh, sometime I would like, if you want to put out another question that way, I would really like to talk about the nature of my development, what it was like. There's a number of things I could share with you, but I think I'm at... I think I'm past the end of this one, so I'm going to say goodbye this time. This has to be a short one. Uh, comment, share, subscribe, uh, and like. Thanks for asking that question. Do appreciate it, uh, Gabriel. Anyway, next time.